On behalf of the chair, Senator Sem Senema, I think, will join virtually. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you, Chairman Powell, for joining us today. And congratulations on your recent reconfirmation. You know, the inflation numbers continue to be concerning, and this is the number one issue I've been hearing about from Arizonans. Families and small businesses are paying higher prices, and they need relief from soaring inflation so they can make ends meet. But we also know that this is not only a U.S. problem. Countries around the world, both big and small, are also seeing high inflation. So how is the U.S. position relative to other countries with respect to inflation? Um, I'd say our, our level of inflation is broadly comparable to that of other major economies. You saw Canada uh, released their inflation number today. It's not far from where ours are. Same with the Western European democracies and the United Kingdom. Um, uh, but the, but there's there are different compositions. So the I would say generally to generalize in the United States, our inflation is has more of a demand driven component, whereas in in Europe it is more to a greater extent driven by very high energy prices, for example. Um, although in the United, the United Kingdom kind of has uh, has a mix of of both of those, we also have high energy prices here. So. The levels are similar, but the, the composition is, is a little bit different here in the United States. Well, thank you. You know, crypto markets have experienced substantial volatility in the past several weeks. Has the Fed been tracking these events and what implications do they have for how the Fed is viewing the broader economic outlook and making decisions with respect to monetary policy? We are, we are tracking those uh, events very carefully, of course, and, you know, not really seeing significant macroeconomic implications. Um, so far, and uh, uh, but um, I, I think the principal implication is is really what we've been saying, and others have been saying for some time, which is that in this um, very innovative new space, uh, really there is a need for um, uh, for a, a, a better regulatory framework that treats you know it, 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 the same activity should have the same regulation no matter where it appears. And that isn't the case right now because a lot of the a lot of the uh, digital finance products are, in some ways, quite similar to products that had existed in the banking system or the capital markets, but they're just they're not regulated the same way. So we need to do that, and I think I think that that uh, is uh, the main takeaway I would have. Mm. What is an appropriate proportion of current U.S. inflation to assign to? Russia's illegal invasion of Ukraine, and how are you thinking about these events in the context of setting monetary policy? Well, I would say the, you know, the, the, the increase in commodity prices are are clearly connected to to the war in Ukraine, um, and uh, so that that part of inflation um, um, would be certainly much lower uh, if. Uh, than it is without the war in Ukraine. And, you know, there really there's nothing that our tools, our tools work on demand, and there's a job for our tools to do here. There is a, there is a, a job to moderate demand so that it can be in better balance with supply. But it, it wouldn't, uh, we, we don't think that we have the answer to higher oil prices, uh, you know, due to the global um, oil situation. Mm. I know the Fed tracks the core personal consumption expenditures <clears throat> index closely when thinking about monetary policy. Many trends in our economy, including a big shift towards technology and e-commerce, accelerated during the first year of the pandemic. And it's possible that the indicators and weights used to measure inflation may need to be revised to accurately measure inflation as Americans are experiencing it. So we all know inflation is high, but how high it is matters to ensure that we have an appropriate response. Congress and the Fed should make decisions based off the best information that most accurately reflects the challenges that families and businesses are facing. Have you given thought to this issue? Well, um, yes, in the sense that um, we, you know, we look very carefully at the way, um, the way we measure inflation in this country. We actually use personal consumption expenditures, which is a little different and, and uh, a better approach, we think, than the more traditional consumer price index. Uh, this was a change we made about 20 years ago, and I think economists generally think that PCE inflation does uh, a better job of measuring the inflation that people are actually experiencing in their lives. So that, that is what we do, and we keep it updated. You know, it, the, the, uh, the, the uh, 
government agency that, that manages it, keeps it updated on a regular basis. So we think that's the right, uh, the right approach in terms of measuring inflation. Of course, we look at CPI as well. Um, but uh, we've, we've chosen to, to, to make PCE inflation our, our principal uh, measuring stick. Mm. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I see my time's expired. I, I yield back. Thank you.